Holidaymakers on the Isle of Wight had a good view of the new Saunders Row A1 jet propelled flying fighter on her trials. Details of the boat include a pressurized cabin for the pilot with emergency ejection device, two powerful jet turbines totally enclosed, and four 20 millimeter cannon in the nose. Flown by test pilot Geoffrey Tyson, the aircraft, the first of its kind in the world, apparently gave an excellent performance. Across the Atlantic Ocean, the Saunders Row Company of Great Britain had successfully married jet power with water-based aircraft. In 1944, work had begun on the SRA-1. Saunders Row would also produce the mammoth Princess flying boat. While the Princess would be considered a dinosaur in the age of modern commercial aircraft, the jet-powered SRA-1 was the most technically advanced flying boat yet built. Air was fed via the large intake situated in the nose through a duct to the two engines, which were Metro Vickers Axial Flow turbojets. The first of three prototypes built was flown on July 16, 1947. As early as 1943, Saunders Rowe had submitted a proposal to the Air Ministry for an advanced jet fighter flying boat. The idea of deploying a jet fighter in the Pacific Theater during World War II was warmly received, especially if this fighter needed no prepared bases, just sheltered stretches of water that could not be bombed out of use. The war ended before the first was completed, but the requirement remained. To minimize drag normally associated with flying boat designs, the wingtip floats rotated 180 degrees to retract into the underside of the wing. By 1948, the two remaining prototypes were also airborne. The SRA-1 attained a speed of over 500 miles per hour, well in the speed range of current land-based jet fighters. At the Farnborough Air Show that year, pilot Jeffrey Tyson gave an impressive demonstration with a fabulous display of aerobatics. No one had ever seen a flying boat perform like this. Unfortunately, two of the aircraft were lost in separate accidents in 1949. Although neither accident resulted from design flaws, the development program was soon halted. The SRA-1 was a remarkable aircraft, but it had already lost parity with a new generation of land-based fighters. Its final public appearance was in London on the Thames at the Festival of Britain in June 1951. Arriving at dawn from Cowes, the Saunders Row A1 came down on the Thames in Woolwich Reach. It is believed to be the only jet flying boat in the world and is the first jet aircraft to alight on London River. Contrasting sharply with vessels typifying the past, a few of which can still be seen on the Thames, the flying boat was towed upriver. She was on her way to the South Bank Festival site, of which she is to be one of the main attractions of British Gas Turbine Week. The SRA-1, which is an experimental aircraft, has a speed of over 500 miles an hour. Before it would fade into oblivion, however, the U.S. Navy took notice and considered developing its own water-based fighter. The American Navy's latest aircraft, the Sea Dart, recently gave its first public demonstration at San Diego, California. Claiming to be the first jet fighter seaplane, the aircraft is of delta wing design and fitted with water skis for landing on and taking off. The plan is to increase the range and flexibility of the U.S. Navy's striking power but details of the Sea Dart's speed and performance have not yet been released. It's reported, however, to have proved highly satisfactory on test flights and to be unusually easy to handle. Building a jet-powered flying boat is a challenge, but making one fly the speed of sound is practically unimaginable. The 
Convair design team, headed by Dr. Adolf Bernstein, knew that aerodynamics had to be given first priority. They found the ideal design, but would the Navy go for it? So we, we sat down, had a big powwow in the office, and Adolf sat there, I can remember, he had a pad of paper, and he said, we might try something like this. He said, we could build a Delta, which we know will fly all right, and we can try putting hydro skis on it. So they took it back home and came back with the proposal for the sea dart. It went through the evaluation, and um, our people all passed on it and said, yeah. It's worth trying. The result would be one of the most ambitious flying boat designs ever conceived. Although the sea dart looked more like a float plane, it was truly a flying boat in that its hull rested directly on the water's surface. Hydro skis extended on oleo struts to positions ideally suited for the delta wing, which requires a large angle of attack necessary for takeoff and landing. When airborne, the skis retracted into the fuselage, allowing aerodynamic streamlining for supersonic flight. With wheels at the aft end of the skis and one swiveling tail wheel, the sea dart could enter and exit the water under its own power. A brilliantly designed aircraft, but could the Navy find a use for it? The real object of the sea dart was to prove uh, the feasibility of the idea whether you could really do it, and with what you got would be a usable item. So in, in designing the airplane in order to save weight and time, things like that, it was decided that the principal uses of the airplane would be to test the hydrodynamics and to test the high speed, high altitude performance of the airplane. Once its skis retracted into the hull, the sea dart could assume its streamlined form. The 60-degree delta wing pioneered by Convair proved superior to the conventional swept-back wing for supersonic flight from the standpoint of drag, stability, and control. The test pilot reported that the sea dart was completely conventional in maneuvering as any other contemporary high-performance land-based jet. And on August 3rd, 1954, in a shallow dive at 34,000 feet, he exceeded Mach 1 and took the sea dart through the sound barrier. A supersonic water-based interceptor was an intriguing concept. In the sea dart, the U.S. Navy had found a one-of-a-kind airplane. It promised the inherent mobility of water-based aircraft, but also the speed and firepower of the Navy's fastest jet. It could be armed with a maximum of 48 folding fin rockets or four 20 millimeter cannons. This American twin jet seaplane is called the Sea Dart and is an experimental aircraft. These pictures record the dramatic moment of a test flight and show that progress is never won without sacrifice, in this case a tragic one. 